honey, can you pass me the NAR box? Meh, still okay. Now, I've been thinking a lot of what to tell you in this video, and actually filmed this three different versions just to make sure I got all the details in and all the specs. But I realized that's not what you need. You need to know what this thing is, what it does, and if it performs well enough for you to buy one yourself. Or maybe not. Now here it is, the Narbox 2.0. So I had this for a little over a month now and these are my thoughts. What is this thing? And that's the question I get asked the most when I tell people about this product. So let me just show you. When you're in the field and you just shot one of your best pieces of work, you want to make a backup to make sure all of that is safe. But a laptop, let's get real, it's not always the ideal tool. It's heavy and it's big to put away and the lighter your kit, the better it is. Also, it doesn't like rain much. This thing on the other hand, it's a portable rugged backup device with an SSD up to one terabyte of storage. And with just one touch of a button, you can trigger a backup, even to a specific folder if you set that up in the presets. Try that for a change, but it doesn't stop there. It has its own Narbox apps, but also integrations with third-party applications. So you can start your workflow of copying, moving, reviewing and rating of all of your files, even editing those before you even get back to your studio setup. Basically, it's the missing link between you taking the SD card out of your camera and starting at your computer. And that is why it's so special to me. So what does it do? And I do wanna give you a little bit of information about the hardware and the specs, especially since it's a huge upgrade from the 1.0. So let's do this in a rapid fire. It has a Intel quad-core 2.4 gigahertz CPU, a quad-core Intel HD graphics GPU, four gigabytes of RAM, and an SSD in 256, 512, and one terabyte configuration. It is powered by a 3000 milliamps removable battery that gives you roughly between three and six hours of use, five mostly in my case. It has a 35 watt fast charger in the box to charge it up to 80% in one hour, two USB-C ports with speeds of up to 350 megabytes per second, one SD card slot of up to 75 megabytes per second, an HDMI port. And you can order additional card readers if you're using any other card than an SD card, a micro SD, for example, CFAST, CF or XQD. Wow, that was a lot, guys. The build is awesome. It's military spec rated. It is dust proof. It's shock proof. And it's also water resistant. I mean, water resistant, not waterproof. So don't submerge this for too long. Although on a rainy day in the field, it should definitely not stand in your way. Like you see, I tested that vigorously. But the magic really happens when software and hardware are coming together. From how I see it, the Narbox has three major use cases. Backup, photo processing and video processing. Now I still own a Narbox 1.0. You cannot argue it redefined this part of the market. But these days you also have DJI Copilot, uh, Western Digital, Wireless, something. But they all work on the backup part. The Narbox, on the other hand, also tries to be part of your workflow when you start working on these images or videos that you just took. Backup. Like I said, you can backup without the need of your smartphone with the one-touch backup. But if you do want more control, there's a full-sized file manager integrated in the SafeKeep app. You can easily copy and move around files from your SD card to the Narbox and then to an external hard drive. Or you can do that from an external hard drive to another drive. So the Narbox here really functions as a mini computer that's handling the files any place you want them to go. They also just introduced multiple destination copy. So you can now copy files to two different locations using the Narbox itself or the SafeKeep app. 
And to top things off, they also have an integration with Dropbox. So this one, if it's on Wi-Fi, it will upload straight to the cloud. Do you know how much time that saves me? All of these things I just told you? Photo. Now, no matter where you are, you can use the Selects app and open up a workspace to start reviewing and rating your images straight on your phone or your tablet. To give you an idea, I went to a coffee bar and had some images to review, but before I got my coffee, I already had rated 514 images, and that included metadata. I think that's where the Selects app really shines. Now, um, I was a little bit skeptic at the start, um, especially for at which speed this would go, um, but when I started using it, my mind was literally blown away by how fast this is and how good it works inside of my workflow that I'm using for editing images. Then when it's time to start editing, you can choose three great third-party applications. That is Google Snapseed, Affinity Photo, and of course Lightroom CC like we had with Narbox 1.0. Now what I found out works best for me is to import all of my files, then rate the images, and then import only the best images straight into Lightroom, and then you can start an edit, and the best part of this, this will upload, and I can finish that edit on my iMac with a big screen. Now for video, you can use a tablet or a phone to review your footage using the Narbox app. And a pro tip here, you can use an external monitor through the HDMI port and review the files in full resolution there. And that's great in the field when you have a break and a monitor like maybe the Atomos Ninja 5 on hand. But they also have a really nice integration with LumaFusion. Now, I'm an editor myself and I'm gonna be really, really honest with you. Editing on an iPad, it's not my favorite thing in the world. But the thing is, for my editing style, I do a lot of speed ramps and I am so used to a keyboard for having the shortcuts, I feel like my fingers cannot keep up with the pace. Yeah, I just heard that. But if you're more into the basic cuts like documentaries, social media related, vlog related stuff, that's probably more than enough for you. And from there you have a basic rough cut that you can just export to your film roll. It's not meant to be replacing my computer. I'm just so much faster when I do creative work on my computer because of the shortcuts, because of just the workflow that it's in. Um, it also has like a lot more power, 64 gigabytes of RAM, i9, you know, these kind of specs on the computer in, instead of what you have here. But this thing, it actually reduces the time I'm spending before I am doing all of my creative work. And it's just why it's so valuable to me. Now, I do want to mention a few things. Like the 1.0, this is going to get a bunch of extra features and updates. You just know this thing is going to get better over time. Also, I just skipped over a bunch of functionality just to trying to keep this review a short, compact video. But if you want to know more about that, they have great tutorials where everything is explained. Um, it taught me a lot as well. Link in the description. And then guys, to round this up, I think I can only say one thing. And that is that this Narbox is what a Narbox was always meant to be. And I know that's a big statement, but it's just everything just works the way it's supposed to. There's no lag. It just, this is the thing, it's a premium product. Most importantly, it frees up time on a project and that gives me more time to be my creative self on work I actually want to do. But you guys already know what I'm gonna say because it's all about that creativity.